uh, our buddy from NJ.com, uh, the man who knows all there is to know about the New York Giants and uh, and any scandal in all of football, I believe. Uh, Jordan Ronan joins us. Jordan, what's going on? Do I just look scandalous? <laughs> you look like you just know where they are. Like you, you come on, man. Don't I don't do get have a radar for that. Stuff. You do. I love it too. It's why you're the one of my few skills in life. <laughs> <laughs> you are the man, and we're glad you're out here with us from NJ.com, uh, 104.5 The Team, live on Radio Row. Um, it is an absolute. Is it, is this crazier than last year? Right now, this little Radio Row is kind of nuts here. I mean, today, particularly, uh, 49er people came out. Yeah, yeah. Who knew? Who knew they still had fans? Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, you know who the most popular 49ers are out right here. You don't see that Colin Kaepernick or guys like that. It's Joe Montana and yeah. Jerry Rice. Yeah, they are a lot of throwbacks. When Joe Montana and Jerry Rice walk around here, everybody just. We. I was in the bathroom. Uh, Jerry Rice happened to be in at the same time, and two cops like wouldn't let me leave the urinal area until he was out. No, I. I look over. No, I. I fought the air. There's like a man code. Yeah. Like, it, like hey, chin, hey, goat, high five. No, I didn't do it. Yeah, yeah. No, I didn't wash my hands. How you doing? <laughs> Jordan, run on. I'd love to go to the urinal, man. <laughs> yeah. Woo-hoo. Um, so as we're, as we're here, the Giants still uh, making headlines. The um, I, I know that this is a, a touchy issue because of Jay Bromley. Nothing, nothing's been filed against him. What do you know from that from that issue? Yeah, I mean, just what I heard is that uh, it doesn't look like there's really going to be any charges filed. Uh, we'll see what comes out of it. They obviously have to investigate this. It's something you don't take these kind of claims lightly. But all signs seem to be pointing towards no charges being filed against Jay Bromley. And then uh, he just put himself in a really bad situation. And, uh, you know, he certainly got him in trouble. And, uh, Does he stay in New York? Does this, this isn't enough to make him not a giant, right? Not if it's not true. I okay. Mean, if there's any hint of truth to a rape accusation, yeah, you can right. pretty much end his career. But uh, right. I don't think that's. It doesn't seem like that's where this is leading. This one. But hey, you know, you got to let it play out. You got to go through it. They, you know, they, there's a rape kit involved. There's medical testing. Uh, so until all that results come in, there's there's nothing definitive that you you know you could say this is definitely you know this did not happen or it doesn't seem to be a, something that happened, but. Uh, it seems to be the way the police are, are leaning, and that uh, you know the story sort of does her story doesn't exactly match up completely. Roger Goodell spoke today, and it looks like he wants a new rule that's kind of you're, you're calling the Odell Beckham rule. What is that about? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I got some you know a couple stray people on Twitter sort of harassing me that you know <laughs> why, why, why does it have to be Beckham? Well, let's be honest, he committed three personal fouls in one game. Do you know anyone? Uh, do you know anyone that committed three personal fouls in the same game? Not that I can recall. Even? I mean, that's you, you know. Do you know anyone? I don't even think Vontez Perfect pulled that one yeah, off. I don't. Three personal fouls in one game. I think you know. So to think that that didn't maybe it's not the lone reason that they're going to come up with this rule where if you commit mo- multiple personal fouls in one game, or at least this is what Roger Goodell is pushing for, that it leads to an automatic ejection. So to think that the Odell Beckham incident isn't a big part of why the push is now going to start would be silly and foolish. You know, that incident was... Well, they lost public. control of the game. They lost control of the game. It was very... It was so public, and it was so big, and it was one of the best players in the league, so that is going to be the reason. I mean, this rule is for, you know... I'm not... I, look, I'm not a, I'm not the smarter guy. Yeah. Like, everyone else is naturally just going to be like, oh, that's like the Odell Beckham rule, because of what happened immediately after that season, they're going to go and they're going to try and enact a rule to make sure that you can't commit multiple personal fouls in the same. But what John Mayer said, and this is a good point, not all personal fouls are created equal. If it's two face mask penalties, yeah, it's not the same as human missling some guy from you know with a 15-yard right. yard head start. Josh so. Nor. Josh Norman would have been ejected under the same rules, right? And that from that game, he had two. Didn't Beckham have three and Norman two in that game? Did he end up with two or did he have one? I mean, it, it's such a blur because the refs just completely lost control of that game. I so think he, I, I think he had one. Okay. I mean, isn't I don't this? Know. I, I got to double check that now. But, but isn't this rule more of an indictment on the referees when you get right down to it? Jordan Ron on NJ.com. Well, that's what they said. They want to take yeah. it. They, you know, that's what Goodell said. They want to take it out of the referee's hands. Yeah, because so that's exactly what you're saying. I mean, they, they lost they, control of that game. It, it was ridiculous. Like, I, I, all right, I'm, I've, I've said this on the. I haven't had a chance to say this to you. Otto Beckham Jr. is wrong, completely wrong. You can't headhunt a guy, you can't blindside him, can't spear him. But when you're out there before the game with bats and you're saying whatever it is you're saying and you're saying the same stuff during the game and you're playing that chippy nature, you got to take a little bit of that responsibility too. So I give some of the blame to Norman. 
I give some of the blame to the refs. How do you not stop that? How do you not kick him out of the game earlier? Absolutely. Agree 100%, but at the same time, none of that, is, you know, is a reason for Odell Beckham to do some of the things he did. So, that, that you know, you do that, you deserve to get kicked out of the game. You probably you definitely deserve to get kicked out of the game. The human missile by itself. Yeah, absolutely. The torpedo by itself. Yeah, absolutely. There's enough reason for me at any point of any game to, to toss a guy out of the game. But, hey, you know, they need a rule to take this stuff out of the official's hands. And uh, this is one way to do it. Now you have to sort of clarify it. This is probably going to be need to be fine-tuning. can't just be too straight. Per you know, any two personal fouls are automatically out. Right. You know. We saw Ezekiel Elliott, the uh, former Ohio State running back, walking around a little while ago, and some mock drafts are saying the Giants would would give him a look. Is he a fit there? Uh, you, they, they need a running back. I mean, I mean, not that they don't need a running back. They need playmakers. Right. You know, they, they're going to need another playmaker. Uh, you know, their running back situation is okay. It's not great. It's not terrible. I think you can survive with Rashad Jennings and, and Shane Vereen, uh, especially if they're used properly. Uh, to, I think everybody yeah. who's on board of the saying they probably should have used Rashad Jennings more than they did rather than, you know, alternate and go for full running back right. rotation nonstop. With Everyone gets a turn, kids. It'll yeah. be fine. Don't worry. Yeah, You're going to get a loser. Yeah. We're only, you just finished second, from, you know, uh, no, fourth from first. Out right. Of five people. Here's your yeah. orange pills. Have a nice game, guys. Yeah, <laughs> no, they, they, so, but I mean, Elliot, good player. I haven't done a ton of draft study yet. I mean, I obviously right. watched some Ohio State games because they're Ohio State and they're, they're one of the best teams in the nation. Uh, and he's a really good player. But unless they view him as a transcendent type running back, I just they're not taking a running back in the 10th pick unless they view him as being uh, Adrian Peterson or Todd right. Gurley. Like, they thought very right. highly of Gurley. Uh, but unless they view him as being that level of a player, I mean, First round pick on a running back is a tough, right? It's, it's a, a tough, tough sale, especially that especially early. Especially when you yeah. need pass rushers. Right. Well, that's all right. There's your next question, Jordan. Is is JPP coming back to the Giants this year? Man, I mean the price. It's all about the price here. Right. Now, I say no, and here's really? the reason why. Okay. JPP is not the same player. We all right. know that, right? I mean it. it doesn't have fully functions in both hands like he did before. Right. You expect him to be the same player. We don't know. Maybe he will be. Doubtful. But you don't, regardless, you don't know. He's going to be a risk. Okay? How much are the Giants willing to risk in that? Are they, are they be willing to pay him more than everybody else? This is his last, this may be his last payday ever. You know, like in this right. league. What if he never, ever comes back to be a significant player? What if he can't really play with, with the one hand? This is his last chance to get any sort of real payday. He'd be foolish not to go to whoever the highest bidder, whatever that number may be. In this spot, with the situation he's in personally after what he went through, look, you're trying to take care of your family and everybody as much as possible, future generations. You take whatever you can get. Now, I don't know what that number is, $8 million a year or somewhere around there. Who's going to pay him that? Are the Giants going to pay him that? Are you really willing right. to invest three or four or five years in Jason Pierre-Paul? I mean, it's a big risk. The Giants aren't really in a great position right now to be, take big risks. They need sure things, especially at defensive end, because you look at it right now, Ayers, JPP, both free agents, they have zero defensive ends. They have Oa. That's it. Yeah. What, zero career sacks, only what, two, three career games? More, yeah, more injuries than games. Yeah, so you need something a little more certain to me. It's a little risky for them, especially... With the situation, so if they get a budget price, he could if be they back. They get the right price, sure. But if I'm, if I'm Jason Pierre-Paul's representatives, why am I going to take right. a one-year, three million dollar deal with incentives? No, I'm going to take as much guarantee money as he humanly possibly can get, because there, there may not be, may not be more money out there for him in the future. When Beckham was suspended the last game of the year, the Giants didn't have a whole lot of places to turn at receiver. How do they feel about their receiver depth? And are they going to attack that free agency, the draft, anywhere? Well, they're definitely going to. Uh, they got to get. They got to get a wide receiver. You know, they, they just were insufficient at that spot. You, whatever they decide to do with Victor Cruz, I mean, he's not going to come back under his current contract. They may have to, you know, renegotiate it and slash. If you haven't played in two years, you're not going to go and make nine million dollars. Uh, you know, no team is going to pay, pay him that. Uh, the Giants are probably going to slash that number big time if he wants. If he's willing to come back and, you know, take their price, which I think probably probably will happen, but Ruben, you, you can't count on Victor Cruz for anything. If, right. you, if you come back, you give him one year, two million, 
you know, you give him and, and you say, okay, cross my fingers, hope he comes back. But you cannot count on that no matter what. He hasn't played in almost two years. Okay. Ruben Randall now. That's the other one. This is a guy never inspired much confidence from his coaches, but benched a couple times. His work ethic isn't considered to be the strongest in that locker room. I just don't see how, given those circumstances, that that guy is going to be coming back to the team. Unless they're really desperate. I mean, I have to think that they're going to address wide receiver probably in free agency and probably in the draft as well. Jordan Rod out of NJ.com. Uh, before I let you go and, uh, you know, dig up dirt on whoever, and I've, I've seen you corner Brandon Marshall. I've seen you corner some big names. You're, you're good. You're going to get dirt. I know it. I feel it. I can't wait. But That's my job. Yeah, absolutely. you're great at it. Like That's why we love you. That's why you're, you're, you're friend of the show status, you know. How long until Ben McAdoo can't take you the way that Tom Coughlin couldn't? I don't know. Me and Ben actually, we have a, we have a fairly decent relationship so far. So uh, I think it's going to take a little while. Let's see the first time he blows a fourth quarter yeah, lead. He really blows one. <laughs> because you know Ben McAdoo was in a spot, and this is where we'll see what he you know we'll see what he was really made of. The Dallas opener was such a disaster, right? Yeah. He doesn't talk until Thursday, so that game happens on Sunday night. Four days later is the next time he talks, right? He doesn't have to go meet the media or, you know, fess up for the disaster that unfolded until four days later, and he's like, I don't really want to, you know, I want to move forward and not talk about it. Well, you know what? When you're the head coach, you can't move forward and not talk about it. You know, people want to know what happened. The fans want to know what happened. And you, you're you going to sit there, and you're going to get peppered on it. Now, we gave him some questions on it, but he kept trying to deflect it and say, I'm not going to have it. So it'll be interesting. One thing Ben McAdoo did say to me, though, he said this to me a couple times. He said, uh, I want you to be hard on me. So we'll see if he really means it. We'll see, if, we'll see how much he really means Challenge accepted. Yeah. He, he, this was before he was the head coach, so I'm right. not sure exactly yeah. he exactly knew what he was bargaining for at the time. We were having some fun with this before the show. We haven't even played this Super Bowl yet, and already next year's odds are out. And the Giants were at 40-1 to 1 in the same neighborhood as, like, Jacksonville and Tennessee. And I thought that seems extremely low. But are they as far away as 40-1 to 1 would indicate? It sounds like you don't think they're uh, really a contender Tennessee, yet. yeah. I mean, I like Jacksonville, though. I'm, Jacksonville sounds like good value to me. I mean, Jacksonville's an up, I feel like Jacksonville's an up-and-coming team. Like, they have some players. You look at their offensive weapons. Yeah. So I, I would you say okay forty to one fine with Jacksonville though I'm like okay that, that, that's pretty that sounds fine and then you with Tennessee right yeah, Tennessee's pretty, yeah. I don't see much in Tennessee where it could be overly oh. optimistic so yeah yeah Marcus Mariota and yeah well I mean let's think what were they last year I think if I remember it actually even dipped to like uh, I don't know for some reason right before the season or like a couple months before the season everyone got all high on the Giants they were probably I think like twenty five to thirty. So there's a little more optimism. But, you know, it'll change. Let's see. They're 40-1 to 1 now. Let's uh, reconvene on this conversation after free agency when they have $50 million to spend. And everybody will be all excited about this guy, this guy, and this guy. <laughs> probably unjustified. You know, they're probably 40 to 1 was probably the right number originally because those guys in Vegas know what they're doing, I heard. Yeah. yeah. Somebody, they, they, somebody once told me they know what they're doing. They, they make sure that they, they they know how to make money. They seem, <laughs> they seem to figure out how to get my money. I mean, uh, most people's money. Yeah, uh, give, me, give me a couple, uh, you know, a couple on Jacksonville. You know? that, I mean, it's definitely it's a long shot worth looking at. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Jordan Ron on MJ.com here with us, 104.5, the team out here. Thanks to our friends at Bud Light. Uh, Jordan, I'm going to, uh, I, I just, I got to get a hold of you soon because I want to know what's going on with the process when you start breaking down the draft. Because you, I've, and some Giants fans don't realize, you can be won over and have been won over by this team. It's just, you just tell the truth. <laughs> well, that's the thing is I have, I wasn't around for the good time. So, you know, I've only been here for three years and they stunk for three years. They've been you, bad. You softened on them last bad. year though. You did. I saw it when you started. Oh, you bought on. in a little bit during some of those fourth quarter disasters when we all realized they were talented enough to win, just stupid enough to lose. You but bought it. I, I saw bought, it. I bought into them being what though? Being a, what? A good team. Not a good team. Being an okay team. Which which is a start with you. That's how it starts. <laughs> you're, you're ice cold. Actually, you're right. You know what? That is the first sign of an okay team I've seen since I came here. Oh. <laughs> Think about it. They were 0-6 they right? when I came in uh, yeah. in 2013. Yep. They stunk. They, I know they won seven in the last ten, but they still stunk. Last year, they were terrible in 2014. I mean, they were never a good team. They got, they got railed in that seven-game losing streak stretch. They had no chance to win against any good team. 
And whenever they played a good team in that year, they were getting hammered. Le this year actually was the best of the three years. Right. Which is saying a lot because they stunk this year too. They finished six and ten. Well, as I said to Jeff Schwartz, <laughs> worst when, defense in the league. When, as I said to Jeff Schwartz when he sat down, you realize if you took care of your business in the fourth quarter, you'd be working this week. There you go. <laughs> but hey, you know how many teams can say that? Um, you know how many teams in the league? Can I, say that? I think it's thirty. About 30 teams can say that right now. 30? Yeah. So, all right. Well, Jordan, run out of NJ.com. Thank you so much for hanging out.